Okay, a quick review. This is the card I made with the triple layer stamping technique on Wednesday evening on my business page, Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nape. It is um, posted on my blog today. So you can see that uh, entire video demonstration plus get all the cutting dimensions and complete supply list on stampinpeace.com today. It's also on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a shadow box card. And this is what we're going to be making. It's quite simple to make. I'm going to be featuring the poinsettia petals stamp set as well as the dies. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you about the poinsettia dies is each layer has an outside border that does the cutting and then the inside um, basically embosses your cardstock or whatever you're using. You'll see those um, veins in the petals. And to make it easier, I'm going to give you this tip. I like to um, put the outline down, center the embossing piece in it, and then um, just connect them, hold them together with a piece of washi tape. That's the easiest way for you to um, cut and emboss all your <clears throat> poinsettia petals. In addition, I am using the layering oval framelits. I've chosen one of the solid oval framelits. It also comes with the scallops. Um, oftentimes, if you're like me, I get very excited about all the fancy die cuts, and I often forget about going back to um, just the very simple shape dies, and we have lots of good ones. So these are the featured products, and I will talk about some more as we go along. Now to make this shadow box card, good morning, Wendy. To make this shadow box card, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock that measure five and a half inches by four and a quarter. Okay, five and a half inches by four and a quarter. Now, as you can see on this one, I use the Thick Whisper White for the front and back. So depending on what pieces you're using, what you're stamping, um, what you want your final project to look like, you'll be changing that up. You can even use designer series paper. However, when I use designer series paper, your box is not going to be quite as sturdy because this is much thinner than cardstock. So what I like to do, and I hope you can see this well, I use that specialty um, poinsettia plush, plush poinsettia vellum, I believe that's called. And I just cut that to size and adhered it to my cardstock because I want this shadow box card to be real sturdy so that it stands up nicely. So I'm going to be doing the same thing with this one. So let's get started and I will show you how. By the way, when you cut out the pieces from your cards, save them. I'm sure you can come up with another way to use these, whether it be on another card or making gift tags or whatever. So I said that you would need two pieces of cardstock that measure Five and, five and a half by four and a quarter inches. So these are basically the same size of a finished, standard finished card. On each of them, you need to score at a half inch and one inch on each end. I've already done it on my old olive, but I still need to do it on my very vanilla piece. So I'm going to score half inch and there's a reason to this, so follow with me. I'm going to score half inch on each end. And then I'm going to flip it over 
and score it <clears throat> one inch on each end. And the reason I have you flip it over is that you have the score lines going the opposite direction because when you are folding this, we're gonna make a Z fold on each end and your pieces will just fold more easily if you do that. And I do suggest that you use your own folder to give a nice crease to each of those folds. I'm going to do the same thing with the old olive cardstock that I've already scored. And again, when you're scoring, it's Whoops, went the wrong way. It's a half inch and one inch on each side. Okay, so this is how my shadow box card is going to fit together. You're seeing it from the top view. And I'm going to be adhering each of the ends. Before I do that, there's a couple things I wanna do. I kinda like to put things the pieces together first and then put the card base together. So one thing I want to do is stamp my sentiment in the center of this inside or back piece. You can see on the first one, I um, put a piece of designer series paper back there and then I stamped and die cut a sentiment. But I'm doing things a little bit differently on this one. And by the way, this stamp, the sentiment comes from, where is it here? The Wrapped in Christmas stamp set, which also goes with the um, heartwarm, Heartwarming Hugs suite. All right, I'm gonna put this back here so I can see the edges of my cardstock a little bit better so that I can hopefully stamp this right in the center, nice and straight. Oh, that looks good. Okay, and I was just putting it in the center of those score lines in the top and the bottom. Now, I do need to cut my opening for the front, but before I do that, I'm going to add this layer of designer series paper. And if you go just around the edges, you will get this to adhere to your card front, but then you'll also have, whoops, got some glue somewhere. Um, you'll also have two individual pieces of um, paper, the cardstock and the DSP after you cut out your image, your shape. So bring my stamping cut and emboss machine in here. When you're die cutting, you wanna use platforms one and two. You're gonna add platform three or one of your old cutting plates is, is the equivalent of our um, layer number three or cutting plate number three. I wanna center this on this front. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to put another cutting plate on top. Oh, and that reminds me, I realized this week when I was doing some paperwork that I was supposed to draw the um, winner for the Stampin' Set and second Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine I'm giving away on October 1st. And here we are through the middle of October. Oh, that wasn't so straight, but I think it'll be okay when I add everything. So I apologize for that. So 
after this live at noon, I will draw the winner of um, the people whose names were entered into the drawing for the second stamp and cut and emboss machine. The way people got their name entered was by placing um, a $50 or more order the second half of September. And um, those people got their name in once for each $50 they spent at the end of September. So behind on that, I apologize, but um, at noon today, I will announce the winner of that. I'll put everybody's name into the hat, so to speak, and we'll draw a winner. Okay, so now I went ahead for the sake of time, I went ahead and cut this poinsettia from the red foil paper. That is, um, it's actually a double set of foil paper. You get red and green. So that's kind of fun. The green is really pretty with the, um, the holly leaves that you cut out from the poinsettia dies. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Okay, can you see that my oval's tilted a little bit? I guess it's okay. I think, I'm trying to decide if I should move my poinsettia over. I can't move it over too much, but I think it'll be all right. Um, I am now going to put adhesive on just the outside edge, the outside panels of just one of my cardstock pieces. And then I like to stand them up because that way I know my bottoms are lined up and I can just grab the sides and the top and know everything's going to be in place. And then your card will flatten out nicely. And this is how you're going to put it in an envelope. You flatten it out. So that's why we started with that five and a half by four and a quarter inch size, because that is our standard size and fits nicely into our envelopes. And that's when you have what you have when you're finished putting it together. Okay. And you can see how nicely it stands up. So I think this is really nice too. To, anybody would enjoy this, but I think it's very nice um, for people who perhaps are in a nursing home or even if they're at home and they can't get out much, they can stand this up on a shelf or on a mantle um, and just brings lots of joy. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Wendy. Hi, Lisa and Amy. Who else jumped on here? Janelle, good morning. Trying to catch you all. Hi, Sharon and Patricia. Great. I'm happy to have so many of you here. Be sure and share my Facebook Live video afterwards. You, uh, When you do that, you help me so much as I get new followers and Facebook sends new people to me. And that's what, you know, doing Facebook Lives and Facebook posts is all about, reaching new people who enjoy stamping and paper crafting as much as I do. Okay, so what I want to do with these, and I maybe I should have stuck them on before I put my poinsettia on, but I think it'll work because I just put my poinsettia on some, um, with some dimensionals. So I'm just gonna cut a few strips of this ribbon. This is part of, oh, is it Trimming the Town Suite? And you get real red and old olive ribbons and they're both trimmed with this metallic gold edge. So that's really pretty. And then you can do this with, make these loops with your glue dots. And 
And then I'm going to put another glue dot behind and just tuck them. Tuck this behind that poinsettia. So now you can see where it probably would have been easier for me to do before I put the poinsettia on. You could have even, I could have even adhered it directly to the back side of the poinsettia. But where there's a will, there's a way. I will get this done. And I want to do a small one right up in here as well. Of course, we want to do things in thirds. Let me get this out of the way. So just another fun way you can use your ribbon. It's also a great way to use up those leftover ends of ribbon. You know, you get to the end of the bolt and you just, bolt and you just have a few inches left. This is a great way to make use of those few inches that you have left. Okay, so I have that. And then I think that looks pretty good, but I do want to add, we're gonna fancy this up even a little bit more by adding, hopefully I have them here, the pearls. Where are those? Oh, don't tell me I'm out of pearls. No. My gosh, I think I am. I was at, away at my um, fall creative escape weekend. Oh, I really wanted those pearls. Looks like I'm totally out. But that's okay. I'm going to use these instead. Just a couple of these. Do you think those go? I'm not so sure. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use a few of these um, gold color ones from the Holiday Rhinestones. But we have all kinds of gems. You could use some of the gold. Oh, those look pretty too. Now I'm really, I can't decide. I had my heart set on the pearls though. I'm gonna to have to order some more. Okay, I think I'm going to go with, with these small gems from the Holiday Rhinestone Collection. And I'm gonna put maybe one up here. I'm gonna put one here. Try and work in those thirds, not thirds, uneven. What am I saying? Odd numbers, odd numbers. Decisions, decision. Is that the green cardstock glitter paper? No, I don't have any glitter paper I'm using. I have old olive cardstock with um, some of the... Um, what do I want to say? some of the um, designer series paper from the, do you like this? Poinsettia Place package. Okay, cute card, cute, love it, share. Okay, any questions that I missed? What do you guys think? Do you like these? You know what would be pretty on here is some of these um, silver metallic pearls. If I can get it open. There we go. I'm going to add a few of those to my first card. I think just three. And we'll do one. Two. And put that one inside. Three. I feel like it needs five. <laughs> I 
Hmm. I don't know if I like those on there or not. What do you guys think? What do you think with or without the metallic pearls? Now that I have them on there, I'm not sure I love them. But I do like the gems on this one. I agree. I like the green one better. It looks a little more elegant. I like the red velvet. Um, but I just think all the shimmer and shine on this one. We've got so much shimmer and shine from the ribbon to the red foil to the beaded pearls to the gems um, that just make it a little more elegant and pretty. So any questions about anything? You all like the glitter and the gems? Okay, awesome. Well, I hope you have learned. Honestly, I really don't like these on here. Do you guys ever do that? Change your mind after you do something? Woman's prerogative, right? I'm taking those off. Maybe I would like them if they were plain pearls or even some regular rhinestones. I'm not sure. Maybe I just like it better. Plain. What do you think on that one? You know what? Maybe what it needs is a little sparkle also. Let's give this first one a little old olive bow to give it a little sparkle with that metallic edge. Maybe that's just what I need. It's funny because it's got a lot of detail in the DSP, in the plush vellum, in the poinsettia, but I still felt like it was missing something. Let's see what you all think with this. Oh, Lisa says the red also might be nice on there. I agree. I think either color would work well. Julie, thanks for sharing. I hope things are going well for you in Northeast Ohio. Boy, it sure would be fun to um, get together personally with some of my followers I know a number of you um, live not too far away from me. You know, within a few hours. And that, that would surely be fun if we could ever get past this COVID thing. I think I'll put that right there with just a simple little glue dot behind the knot. Okay. I know I've been MIA a little bit with Facebook Lives, but I am back. You're not getting rid of me that easily. It's just that I was super busy with um, World Card Making Day event with my team and then also hosting a, um, my four-day Autumn Creative Escape Weekend in Cincinnati, which went very well. So let me clear some of this mess out here. Any questions about how to make these box cards, shadow box cards? I'm going to show you again what they look like from above when they're standing up. Just give it a little crease, a little push there. And when you want to mail them, you just lay them flat and push them down flat. They'll fit perfectly in our standard size envelopes. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed today's Fun Fold Friday card demonstration. And I look forward to sharing more great creative projects with you. Um, please do share. If you like what you see here, invite friends to join the um, stamp and piece vip group and also invite people to like my business page stamp and scrap with mary nabe as well as my blog stampandpiece.com the blog is kind of where you get to see everything um, and then also my youtube channel thank you for being loyal 
followers. I appreciate you and I wish you a happy weekend. And I hope you find time to do something fun for yourself, perhaps even some card making. Have a good weekend.